The Coin Lady channel is glad to have you return. Much of what we discuss will be related to crypto in general, but some of it will be specifically relevant to XRP. Let's check it out. Coinbase has decided to halt dollar trading on the cryptocurrency exchange Binance. And now this was something for which everyone could applaud. A decline for Binance is inevitable. Anyone with cryptocurrency should not wish for Binance's demise. Your allegiance should be with Binance. It's because the collapse of Binance would throw the cryptocurrency industry back at least a year, if not longer. In a recent tweet, Coinbase stated that it would temporarily halt trading in Binance USD. The stock market announced on their website that dealing will be halted on March 13, 2023, at or around 2, 0 p.m. EST. The precise rationale behind the delisting remains unknown. On the other hand, Coinbase assured customers that they frequently check the assets traded on the platform to make sure they were up to par with the listing requirements. Having thought about it more, I believe there is more to this. In my opinion, Gary Gensler has some connection to this. Chief Strategy Officer at Binance says that if the United States regulates cryptocurrencies too heavily, it could kill the sector and create real market volatility. It's true that this occurred a few days before Binance heard the news from Coinbase, but I agree with what Cesar has to say here. Regulation poses a greater threat to cryptocurrencies than the collapse of an exchange or a breach that costs millions of dollars. That's the explanation, anyway. Binance's senior strategy officer Patrick Hillman made this announcement on Monday. He told Insider that the United States has historically been a wonderful place for innovation. What we're seeing now, I fear, will have serious consequences for investors in the long run. After the failure of FTX, the world's second biggest cryptocurrency exchange, last year, U.S. Authorities increased their enforcement of crypto regulations. The SEC is using FTX as an example to roll over cryptocurrency, and I think this practice is still in place. It is being used by politicians as a means to introduce new rules. But you can't keep shaking down crypto companies and exchangings without any actual laws being put in place. Has the SEC had it out with Binance? Concerns have been raised about whether the SEC's attention is being directed towards the stablecoin market or the crypto exchange in light of its legal action against BSD. Binance. Many in the crypto community were mystified by claims that BUSD was a security and the subsequent legal action taken against the asset. Given that the USD is pegged at a constant 1, 1 ratio to the US dollar, its use in trading is severely constrained, furthermore, given that the USD is a stable coin, it's hard to see why Gary would want to go after it. To be honest, I believe Gary just has issues with a few stable coins. Because of this, the SEC is challenging the USD issuer on the grounds that the currency is an unregistered security. Paxos. To be sure, a stablecoin doesn't pass the Howey test, so how can we classify it as a security? As far as anyone can tell, nobody has ever bought B-Dollar with the intention of making a profit. As a result, the Supreme Court laid out four standards to determine if an agreement to invest occurs. When two or more people agree to pool their resources for the benefit of a shared goal, that agreement is called an investment contract. I don't see how many of that is related to B-Dollar. The chief strategy officer of Circle, a stablecoin issuer, dispelled rumors that the company had gotten a similar Wells notice in the days following the SEC's action against USD by stating that Circle had not received such a document. But why wasn't a paper sent to Circle? Is BlackRock to blame for that? There is still some suspense. Earlier this month, a group of legal specialists discussed the possibility that stablecoins are securities in an interview with CoinGraph. Despite their name, stablecoins are essentially just a coin that is fixed at a 1, 1 ratio with the US dollar, which means their value fluctuates with the dollars. As a result, I think Gary is just attempting to use his position to pursue another crypto-related matter. First, you attack stablecoins, then cryptocurrency exchanges, and finally you try to extort money from other businesses in the crypto industry. The next step will be to end service to us. That's leading to this effect in the United States. According to a user email acquired by Crypto States late on February 24 th, the cryptocurrency exchange CoinEx has announced that it will no longer accept US customers. We regret to inform you that CoinEx will be unable to continue serving you. S. 
citizens and residents as a result of ongoing governmental scrutiny and will just sit back and watch the cutting-edge industries lead the nation. Information about the Gansler data can be found in the Twitter archive. The reign of terror and corruption by the SEC in the cryptocurrency industry must stop. SEC attorney vs XRP reveals huge corruption in the Gensler files. We are aware of the corruption, but Ripple is not the bad person. That's why it's happening, and why it will keep happening. There are two big revelations coming. The dollar detonates in two seconds, and Ripple plummets. In perfect time, you have been forewarned. Many believe that the end of that rope is also near. And straight off the bat, everyone always assumes Ripple will lose to the SEC, but I don't see that happening this year. I still believe that Ripple will succeed and that XRP will receive legal clarity. When all is said and done, I have faith in the judge to make the correct decision. Even Circle, which has been criticized for its control of stablecoins in SEC, has some reservations. They are hoping that lawmakers will take action. Not dissimilar to how Ripple is pleading with lawmakers to intervene. Commissioner requests delay of stablecoin regulations, etc. As the debate over cryptocurrency laws continues, SEC Commissioner Hester Pace has urged authorities to submit stablecoin rules to Congress. Many people were caught off guard by this news because they expected the SEC to take the initiative in overseeing this rapidly developing sector. What is Hester Pace's motivation for suggesting that lawmakers table action on stablecoin for the time being? What does this mean for the future of the Bitcoin market? Because Gary doesn't have the power to overlook certain types of crypto, I think she's doing it. In my opinion, the legal system is not on his side. When it comes to the legislation, I believe he's operating above it. Stablecoins are a form of digital currency that is pegged to the worth of a commodity like the US dollar or gold. To some extent, they are an attempt to bridge the gap between cryptocurrencies' decentralized, immutable movement and the security of fiat currencies. Hester Pace argues that lawmakers, not the SEC, should be in charge of regulating stablecoins, so he is hoping that they actually do something. Discuss and share your thoughts. The crypto industry is discussing the possibility of regulated crypto markets in 2023, and while they always speak about transparency, they also want some ground rules. This trade is trying to follow the rules. They aspire to be seen as law-abiding citizens. But how can you enforce justice if there are no written laws? In the end, that's all there is to it. Because of this, guidelines and regulations must be established to ensure compliance. If you don't know the rules, how can you be expected to observe them? To that extent, it may be stated. The head of the International Monetary Fund has pushed for stricter oversight of the cryptocurrency market rather than a complete prohibition. We have always been aware of the IMF. They are fond of XRP and XLM. According to IMF Kristalina Georgieva, cryptocurrencies should be outlawed only if they pose a threat to international monetary order. The head of the International Monetary Fund thinks banks should control cryptocurrency rather than outright ban it. She then moves on to discuss stablecoins. The IMF pointed out that, as of right now, the classification of digital assets was still shrouded in mystery. She claims that the UN Financial Agency is presently investigating possible cryptocurrency regulations. There is a lack of consensus on how to proceed with cryptography. It was brought to her attention that stablecoins provide a relatively secure environment for the cryptocurrency market. That kind of goes back to XRP being backed by something, but I don't believe it's going to be backed, is what she says about crypto assets, and I'm on board with that despite the fact that they carry a high degree of risk and should not be considered money. I still anticipate it being assigned a dollar amount. What happens next is something we must watch. Stablecoins could serve as a gateway to the US dollar economy for billions of people around the world, ushering in a new age of US financial supremacy. The US digital economy is at risk from the Biden administration's assault on stablecoins. And as I've said many times before, the rush to outlaw cryptocurrency obscures the innovation it represents. We could be complete idiots, though. The SECC has not yet seen the big picture despite the growing hostilities between the United States and China. Stablecoins are an innovation that has the potential to ensure US dollar dominance for the next decade. However, if the agency regulates them as securities, this possibility is eliminated. 
Considering the present geopolitical climate, a more comprehensive strategy to stablecoin regulation is required, one that seeks to answer the following questions. How can we use stable currencies for covert operations? How can we ensure their safety for customers while encouraging their use of dollars? How can we encourage the use of stablecoins internationally to counteract the digital currency? You shouldn't have any issues with stablecoins. They provide a chance for something good to happen. And with the proper rules in place, we can use this to our advantage to strengthen consumers' voices, increase American military might, and plant our flag in the new digital economy. Therefore, lawmakers must act quickly to prevent further damage. The U.S. Currency is next, and we all know it. As long as we continue to discourage technological advancement, BRICS will succeed in its goal of dollarizing the United States. To fight crypto-based crime, the Financial Action Task Force urges increased compliance with virtual asset standards. Moreover, we must shift our focus away from the criminal use of encryption and recognize the many legitimate applications of this technology. Visualize yourself as a small-scale trader. You probably got into Bitcoin because you believe it's your best chance for future financial independence. Having money in a bank won't give you freedom from money worries. What are your next steps? You put it in the market expecting the next chance to multiply your money by 10 or 100? Where exactly XRP will be in a year or two is anyone's guess. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance, and everyone seems determined to blow it for illegal gain and in honor of Sam Bankman-Fried, who was just one crook and not the entire cryptocurrency industry. India's proposal to have the G20 coordinate crypto regulation globally was backed by the IMF and the US. In my mind, it was always a possibility that the World Economic Forum had already drafted some sort of legislation. They have the plans drawn up already. All the nations that back the World Economic Forum can expect to receive one soon. However, if we talk about global crypto regulation, it will impact every individual on the planet, no matter where they live. In light of the fact that the regulators seem intent on permanently excluding ordinary investors from the cryptocurrency market, it is imperative that they ensure that institutional investors retain access to the sector. This would be a worldwide phenomenon. If that happens, people from all over the world will be unable to purchase cryptocurrency in the future. The United States risks becoming an increasingly hostile environment for crypto entrepreneurs, developers, and users as a result of increased regulation by enforcement, cautionary guidance, and a failure to provide crypto projects with clear approval pathways. Project Choke was officially codenamed. The 2.0 update has begun, and Bitcoin is now a target. This was news to you long before Operation Choke Point was launched. And if you take a close look, that is precisely what is happening in the crypto industry at the moment. Innovation is a target, and they intend to eliminate it. Eventually, lawmakers need to establish crypto regulations. It is they who deploy and install them. We can keep investing in our own future prosperity if individual investors can keep it safe. But until then, all we can do is lay back and watch the events unfold within the crypto world. Have faith, keep your spirits up, and together we will succeed. Together in the air. This concludes my commentary on this topic for this film. Please accept my gratitude for tuning in. I appreciate all of you watching my videos. Please join us again in the subsequent one. Take care, bye.